Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. Today we'll look at part two of building out this weather geolocation application. If you recall in the last part, we built out all of the objects that we want to basically use to serialize the JSON requests. There are a few minor tweaks that I do want to make to this, mainly because I've been looking at some of the other JSON requests and I've realized that I made a few mistakes in the last tutorial. Here I'll bring up one of the newer responses so that you can actually see why I'm making these changes. So if you look at our base response, all of this is fine. We have our strings and then our ints and then we have our list. Now down here for both wind and rain, we want to add these JSON keys nullable equals true. And that's because we could potentially not get back a wind object and we can potentially not get back a rain object. As you see here, rain can be null. Now down in main, we want to change the pressure field into a double from an integer. Now, even though you do see an integer here, this can come back as a double and by adding double, it allows us to deal with both cases, and so this kind of helps us. Also, our temp max and temp min, for whatever reason, I wrote them as integers, but you can see here that they are in fact doubles. So they need to change as well. Down inside of our wind object, we have this gust item, which can come back as nothing. So we want this to be nullable. And we also want to change our degree property into a double as well. All right, so now that we've made these changes, we can open up our terminal and we can run flutter packages, pubs, run, build, run, or build. And this will run the build script a single time and then build out a file for us. So this is in contrast to the watch command that we were using last time, which constantly was rebuilding the file. In this case, we only just need to build it the one time. Now, sometimes when you run this command, you'll get this succeeded after however many milliseconds with zero outputs. This means that it didn't actually change the file. And if this happens, what you can do is go and delete the generated file and then rerun the command. Typically this happens because for whatever reason you do not have read and write permissions on the file. Either it's open by some other means or whatever. So here it says succeeded after 3.5 seconds with one outputs. This means that it did actually in fact work. And you can see here now we have no errors in either response or response g.dart. All right, so with those corrections made, let's get into the main parts of this tutorial. So in this part of the tutorial, we're going to be building out most of the backend logic by creating a repository. We also want to create our model. So the model is different from the response in that we have specific fields that we want to get so even though we're deserializing the entire JSON response, we don't need all of these fields. So let's create a new folder called model. And inside of it, we'll create a file that'll just be called model.dart. I'll put our response on the right here so that we can see the different fields that we're bringing into our model. In here, I'm going to create a class called weather model. We also want to import our weather JSON response.dart file, which is this file here. All right, so one of the fields that we absolutely are going to use is this city name field, which is a string. Inside of our weather model, I'm just going to call this field city. We also want to get the temperature from the main object, and I'll call this one temperature. This will be a double, of course, like it is inside of main. Down inside of our weather object, we can grab the description, the description being like a basic description of the weather in this area. We can also grab our three hour object from the rain object. And I'll just call this field rain. And of course it will be a double. Now the last two fields that we want for now are going to be our latitude and longitude. And these are the latitudes and longitudes of the particular city that we're looking at. Once we've decided on the fields that we want, we can create a constructor for this model. And in here we just put in all of our fields. And then we can create a constructor that will take our base response and convert it into a weather model. I'm going to call this constructor from response. So weather model dot from response. And before we put in the base response item, 
we just need to think about what the top level object is for all of the fields that we're bringing into our model. If we go through the base response, we can tell that we're not actually bringing in any of these fields. So we can kind of ignore it for now. And instead we can use our city object as our base response. We can just pass in city as a parameter and call this our response. And then we can define what all of these fields are in relation to the city object. So here we'll start with this city field. And this is just our city, which is our response dot name. For the temperature field, we take our response, we go into the main object, and then we get the temp field. For description, we want to go from response to our weather object. And because our weather object is a list of weather items, we want to get the first item inside of that list. And then we want to get the description of that item. For rain, we're going to get response rain dot three hour. And then for latitude and longitude, we just go response that chord lat and then response that chord long. So now we don't have to pass in the entire base response. And if we did, we would have to go one more step for each of these items. So it'd be like base response, city, name, base response, city, main, temp, and so on and so forth. All right, so now that we have our model, let's set up a repository so that we can actually get the JSON from our HTTP request. And so I'll create a file called weather underscore repo, and this will be where our repo resides. In here, we wanna make a few imports. We need Dart Async and Dart Convert because we're converting from JSON. We need our HTTP library so that we can actually make the response. We'll also need our response so that we can deserialize the JSON. We'll need our model so that we know which fields we want. And then I've created another file in here that has our API key inside of it called const. I'm not gonna show you my API key. If you're following along, you can get an API key from openweathermap.org. All you have to do is sign up and just verify your email. It's free and it's really not that big of a deal. Also, before we go further, we want to import some packages into our actual project. The packages that we want are the geolocation package. This is what will allow us to get our latitude and longitude from the GPS of our device. And then we also want Rx command. And I'll explain a bit more about what this is when we get up to it. Currently for this video, the latest version of geolocation is 0.2.1 and Rx command is at version 1.0.7. So those are the versions that I will be using in this tutorial. Inside of our repo file, we can now import our geolocation library. And now we can create a class called weather repo. Inside of this class, we do want to declare a variable for our HTTP client. And that's because we want to be able to pass a instance of the client into our repository to make everything work. So we'll also add it to our constructor as well as this.client. The first function that we want to create inside of our repository will be a function that will allow us to update the weather based on the location result that we get back from our geolocation. So here we're going to return a future list of weather model and we're also going to input our location result. Inside of this function we want to create a string called URL and we'll create an if else block to check to see that we're actually getting the result into this function. So if result is not equal to null what we'll do is we will get our URL here which is api.openweathermat.org and then for the lat and long field, we'll actually just get result.location.latitude and result.location.longitude. And we'll just put them directly into our string with string interpolation. And of course, we also want to put in our API key. Actually, I don't need these brackets around the API key declaration. Then if we are not getting a result back, we're just going to call on our latitude and longitude with static coordinates. And we're mainly doing this to populate the application with data when it first opens up. Also for now, if the user doesn't actually give us permission to ping their GPS, we need to have some kind of fail safe that will just 
throw back some information so that the user isn't just running into errors. So in this case, we're just calling a latitude of 43 and then a longitude of negative 79. I believe this is like Toronto or something like that. And then for this app ID field, we of course put in our API key. There is another field that we do want to consider and that's this CNT field. This is the field that will allow us to fetch more cities. So currently with these requests, we're fetching 10 cities and that's it. We can fetch up to 50 cities and we could also make a switcher inside of our application that will allow the user to pick between say intervals of five from five all the way up to 50. So for this CNT item, we can create an integer called CNT as a global variable in this class. And then we can create a function called add cities, which takes in an integer and then assigns it to CNT. Now down inside of this top URL, we can put in the CNT as string interpolation. And when we make a request with our result, it will then allow us to fetch more than just 10 items. All right, so we formatted our URL properly and we have a little bit of error handling. Now we can get our response by calling await client.get and then we pass in the URL. This will call a get request on the URL, which will then return all of the stuff from this client.get call into this response variable. Now below this call, we want to get back a list of weather model and we'll call this rec and we'll take our base response, we'll call its from JSON function, and we're going to call it on the entire response body that we got back from the get request. And of course, we also need to pass in our JSON decode function. So we use JSON decode to decode the response body, and then we call our from JSON function to deserialize this JSON. Now after calling this base response from JSON function on our decoded JSON, we can then call on our cities field, and then we can call map on this so that we can map on each of the cities in the list. And for this map, we can then call on the weather model from response constructor and pass in each city. And of course, because we want this to be a list, we need to call the to list function afterwards. And finally, we can return our request, and this will, of course, return as a future list of weather model, and that's because the function is asynchronous. Now, I know that I could have just returned this entire function call, but I'm doing it this way so that it's a bit more readable for you guys. All right, so now that we have a function that will allow us to request data from our API, we need to create a function that will allow us to request our location result data from the GPS of the device. This function will be called update location. It will be asynchronous and it will return a future location result. For this function, what we're going to do is we're going to just get our future location result by calling geolocation last known location. So this is a method that will ping for the last known location on our device and it will give us a future result now we don't have to put the await keyword in here because we're just passing back this as a future anyway. So instead of awaiting on this, we can just then return our result here and this will return our future location result. Now below this function, we do want to create a helper function. This will be called get GPS and this will return a future Boolean type. In it, we can just call geolocation is location operational. This checks to see if the GPS has permissions and if it's turned on. And if this call is successful, then we return true, otherwise we return false. So we use this as a utility function to figure out if the user has given us the appropriate permissions and if they have their GPS turned on. Alright guys, so that's it for this tutorial. We were able to finish up our model and our weather repository. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about Rx command and ReactiveX in general. We'll go into detail about what observables are exactly and how we can use them to our advantage in this type of application. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the video, 
by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.